before. Okay, so thank you for inviting me to speak to this uh, group of uh, interpreters in um, your practice group when you are talking about burnout. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, burnout, what is it and what are the consequences of burnout? I called it the latest epidemic, but really I was thinking to uh, entitle my presentation burnout, the fashionable epidemic, because there's been this um, fashionable uh, fatigue around, I've noticed in the last few years, where everybody needs to be tired and we're all burnt out. And it seems that it, it is a trend right now. Everybody's exhausted. Everybody is uh, anxious with uh, higher levels of anxiety than, let's say, 10 years ago. And we are all going a bit bonkers. So let's go to the next slide, please, and see what this is about. So um, I've been teaching about stress management and fatigue and um, all sorts of consequences of stress for the last 15 years or so. Uh, and burnout is also caused by stress. So in the body, uh, the stress response uh, is triggered excessively. This is what's going on. This is why we're all so tired. This is why we're all in a state of exhaustion. Um, it causes chronic fatigue, general inflammation in the body, and ultimately inflammation in the brain, which is the most serious uh, kind of inflammation, which is also dangerous for us interpreters because our brain needs to be in top shape. Uh, we need to be able to think clearly. We need to be on the ball all the time. And we cannot afford to have brain fog or fatigue or even inflammation. This would be really serious. So if it is not treated holistically with lifestyle and nutritional interventions, burnout can lead to hormonal imbalances, um, sleep disturbance, mental health, digestive disorders, which are most often than not diagnosed as IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. But of course, uh, the GP and the health system doesn't have time and the resources to go too deep into what happens in the gut flora, what happens, what is the root cause. So we see all sorts of mental health issues and a long list of other unwanted conditions proliferating and becoming more and more common all around. And all sorts of anxiety disorders, um, panic attacks, some people have panic attacks. And these autoimmune conditions that I'm mentioning are very tricky and difficult to diagnose because they are very similar. So they all have fatigue, uh, tiredness, sleep disorders as main symptoms, but also bloating and indigestion, sometimes diarrhea or constipation, but generally bloating and discomfort in the digestive system. And we know, of course, that the vagus nerve, which is the one responsible of the stress response, the vagus nerve that starts from the brain stem and divides into two. There are two vagus nerves actually in the body. It starts from the brain stem and then it comes and it innervates around the heart, the lungs, and the whole of the gut. And this is why, by having 
stress continuously, we suffer digestive symptoms and we suffer discomfort and bloating and all these aches and pains in the tummy, right? So let's go to the next slide, please. So how stressed are you and what stresses you on a daily basis? I was teaching about this and in the past, uh, there was the stress response was triggered rarely because of course I'm talking in in prehistory right when our ancestors were living in caves and they were hunters and gatherers and they had very high levels of stress for a very short time so if this saber-toothed tiger came after them uh, or any other beast right if they were in real life-threatening danger they had to run and there was a period of very high stress but then they got to the cave they sat down uh, hugged somebody in their family or um, started recording their experience on the cave walls right in the form of uh, cave paintings or simply sat down and ca caught their breath and it was for a very short time very stressful but then it didn't happen all the time so these days our stress response in the nervous system is triggered not at the same level but it is triggered so often by the internet or all sorts of alarms notifications alerts uh, social media emails and all sorts of unreasonable expectations actually because who said that we have to reply to an email in the next five minutes who said we have to reply immediately otherwise we lose the job i mean this has never happened in the whole history of humanity right this is new and it is killing us it is breaking us because the stress response is triggered all the time, constantly, constantly. So there is an overuse. This is why we are, we never come back down to the base level to what is really, truly a restful state. And which is why I'm such a strong advocate of these practices of deep rest that I, I teach and I lead in my gong studio. So there is this constant underlying level of inflammation which in turn causes all these modern mysterious new diseases symptoms and syndromes right the syndromes are a collection of symptoms that are not labeled yet as a disease as such because they're so new so the medical science hasn't yet caught up let's go to the next slide please so uh, I taught a, a webinar recently called Shampoo for the Brain, and you'll see why in a minute. But the question here is, are you sleeping? And do you wake up rested? Because burnout also causes lack of sleep or bad sleep, but quality sleep is not restful, right? Rest and sleep are not synonymous. You can sleep and wake up tired. I bet it has happened to you. So good quality rest is of utmost important. Ideally, you should sleep well and have as many naps as you need to during the day as well. So short periods of rest when your body needs it. So this shouldn't be a rule or uh, it shouldn't be considered lazy because we live in such stressful times that we need more rest than before and better quality rest and better quality sleep, of course. So this is why I teach these mindfulness based practices that are deep rest practices. It is the only way to train your brain and your nervous system to release stress because you start at the beginning you don't even uh, release 
half of it at the beginning in a meditation or rela guided relaxation like i'm going to offer you this evening if you are still up for it later at the beginning the body is still all switched on and a bit anxious and a bit why do i have to stand still why do i have to lie on the floor it's kind of strange right because you're used to being switched on all the time but this is why you're not resting properly this is why you're not sleeping well so at the beginning there's this uh, guidance that i offer to help you settle settling uh, and then we can start relaxing and then we can start going into deeper states of rest of rest yes which is the only kind of practices that are healing and restorative truly restorative so with practice you can release this constant low level stress that you we all experience as the new normal which is really not healthy at all so mindful practices benefit the brain our yoga breath initiated movement it, it started with yoga and tai chi and qigong so breath initiated movement can be anything that you do slowly for example just opening your arms and breathing in and then breathing out and letting your arms down like a pour de bras in ballet right like a ballet exercise where you open your arms and then you just so just coordinating your breath and your slow movement is already a mindfulness exercise so you're starting to become more balanced to become a little bit more settled and to release stress and there are other meditation practices as well and of course mine is the best <laughs> but because i combine three different disciplines so i combine the gong uh, therapy i combine uh, the, a different uh, approach to sound therapy with different instruments and plus i layer in the yoga nidra which is the it is called the meditative heart of yoga which is the easiest way to meditate because you don't have to do anything i'm doing the whole thing for you and you just need to be present let's go to the next slide please so we've seen that uh, sleep is paramount right and lack of sleep leads to inflammation to the brain, decreased memory and a lower ability to focus. So for people who like to learn new things like interpreters, we all the time have to learn new things, whether we're preparing for a new job or we are trying to specialize or we're reading something for our hobby or our interests. We all want to be able to learn new things and remember, right? Memory, memory is very important. So to process and remember what you learn, you need to sleep well before learning, then learn, memorize and using whatever techniques and sleep well after. So if you don't sleep well before learning and after learning, you're not going to remember things and it's a bit of a waste of time so during sleep it is when the brain processes and solidifies the memories of what you've studied so there is an example of a pianist but i'm not sure we have time to to talk about the pianist so why did i call my presentation on sleep shampoo for your brain maybe you know that you, the body has its lymphatic system the lymph nodes that are in the underarm around the breast around the um, pelvic region in, on the in the inner upper leg and in other places in the body and the lymph nodes are the ones that uh, uh, generate the lymphatic fluid and there is a lymphatic circulation through the body and the function of the lymphatic system is to detox the body to carry out and help eliminate 
whatever the body needs to eliminate because there are all the time chemical processes in the body and there is um, there are substances that if they're not eliminated they could become toxic so the brain has a similar system that is called the glymphatic system that rinses out these dead cells and the potentially neurotoxic waste products that accumulate during wakefulness and this cleansing process is performed by the cere cerebrospinal fluid and it can only take place during sleep so can you see how important sleep is good quality sleep you cannot live without proper sleep because your body starts becoming sluggish not only you forget things but it's, it's dangerous it's if it is life threatening if you uh, are sleep deprived for more days let's go to the next slide please another uh, thing that i teach in my uh, courses and webinars and every time somebody is willing to listen is breath work how important is our breath as interpreters, we know that to produce our voice and to speak and to be free to process, we need to have the, the breath needs to be free. So obviously the posture is important, open posture in your upper body, relaxed shoulders and generally nothing too tight around your waist, right? So loose clothing and uh, in yoga, pranayama, the Sanskrit word, prana is the life force that we breathe in together with oxygen. And pranayama has been translated as breath control until recently when the yoga scholars more recently have started saying, no, it's not a control like a cognitive control. It's freeing up your breath. So if you do enough, if you are uh, guided by a teacher who knows what he, uh, she or he is talking about and learn these breath work practices, your breath becomes free. And for optimum sleep, you need to be able to breathe freely through your nose. Why through the nose? Because the nasal cavity has uh, filters, that warm and humidify the air and the sinuses continually produce nitric oxide, which is an oxygen species that has these relaxation effects. So in the bronchi and further down into your airways, if you don't breathe through the nose, there will not be this kind of relaxation effect. And the bronchi and the lungs and everything in the respiratory system has to be relaxed enough to breathe efficiently, right? So this is why it's important to have a nose that is functioning well, no blockages, and uh, also when you sleep to breathe through your nose. Let's go to the next slide, please. So um, I teach all these things plus others in my course, Calm, Vitality, Resilience. And besides breath work and uh, yoga nidra and uh, posture, balance, ergonomics, and so many of the lovely things that are gentle, everything that I teach is gentle and inclusive and accepting. N nothing that you want to do when you're stressed to your body that is forceful will work. It will only stress you more. Even certain types of exercise that are too dynamic will stress your body more. So you need gentle movement. And so in my course, and I want to say from the beginning, there is a student discount by going to the page that I uh, placed in the chat, you can, uh, insert the code STUDENT, all in capital letters, and you will see that the price is seriously discounted because I want lots of people to benefit and uh, I'd love to have you as well 
in my community. So there's also information about nutrition for the brain, uh, about uh, basic uh, supplements, because of course, more personalized supplements have to be individually prescribed. Um, there are 12 video lectures, there are uh, exercises uh, of breath initiated movement and seven audio recordings of the brain spa, which is the yoga nidra gong and sound therapy session that you may experience this evening. A beautiful resilience journal for your reflective practice and to track your progress. A nice course calendar with links for all the resources and also with the suggested sequence in which to do everything. And uh, there are two live Q&A sessions. There's access to all the materials for three months and you get my um, unlimited support as well. And you become part of a loving and supportive community, which is still small, but it's lovely and uh, very, very supportive. Everybody is accepting of one another very kind and welcoming, which is what the way we need to be to one another in these stressful times, right? We all have to be kind to each other and not stress more. <laughs> so let's go to the next slide. So uh, I've already mentioned the brain spa. So the brain spa, uh, at the beginning, I used to call these sessions yoga nidra gong and sound bath for brain health and regeneration they are still yoga nidra brain uh, yoga nidra gong and brain spa for brain health and regeneration but then one of my regulars who is julia pogger after one of the sessions she said oh this is the brain spa so since then I have been calling them the brain spa because I thought that was a brilliant name and now I'm using it. And uh, I have it even on my mug, the brain spa and my logo with my initials because I thought it was really nice and easy to remember, right? So during the brain spa, uh, what I do is I relax you first you settle so i teach you how to lay down how to support your back in such a way that you feel cradled almost like in a hammock and almost like you were in mother earth's lap right like a loving mother is holding you so i relax you deeply after you've settled i start guiding you and your conscience and your breath so there is a protocol that I follow for relaxing you deeply, which is part of yoga nidra. And every session is different. There are no two sessions that are equal. And then I play my instruments. So these are all therapeutic instruments and I play them in a therapeutic manner. And their frequencies, so they have different frequencies from uh, high frequencies, mid range, low frequencies, their frequencies penetrate through the waves of the internet and they penetrate your tissues. Uh, you know how much water we have in the body, right? And there's not enough time today to show you in, in with water a demonstration to see what happens in your in your molecules. But just imagine if you've ever seen a mandala shape or uh, those beautiful patterns that are in sacred geometry, right? That as everything is harmonic, harmonious, and like, for example, snowflakes, right? There's very symmetric, beautiful, perfect shapes, right? So this is what kind of patterns are created in your waters, in your molecules, when you are exposed to these uh, therapeutic frequencies. 
So they penetrate you, they tickle your molecules and they harmonize you because what happens with aches and pains, when you have aches and pains in the body, it means that the energy is not flowing. It means there's a blockage energetically. Have you ever seen the map of the body in traditional Chinese medicine with all those lines running down the body for acupuncture, right? The tra traditional Chinese medicine talks about the qi, the life force, and these are highways of energy in the body. And that is why when you go to have acupuncture, they put the needles in a certain line, right? It's a certain line that they are unblocking for you. And then energy starts flowing. Well, this is less intrusive. There's no prickling involved. There's no needles involved. And you benefit uh, the same or even more because the frequencies are healing. So uh, the blockage, wherever it may be, maybe you have backache or maybe you've had bad posture from so much zooming, being in front of screens always attracts you, absorbs you, and you end up instead of being here with the head totally unbalanced on the spine. And that creates tension in the neck and further down the, the, the back, shoulders, of course. So uh, if you have backache, let's say, it means that around that place, there's a blockage, almost like a, an obstacle, right? So when you lie down and you are relaxed and you are taken to these deep levels of rest and there comes the, this wave of sound with the healing frequencies from the gongs and from the other instruments, that blockage, that um, obstacle starts to vibrate and starts to crumble. So the energy is free again and there's a lot of interesting um, experiences that you can have in deep relaxation some of them are very pleasant some of them are a little bit emotional because when you drop your guards maybe emotions that you have suppressed for a long time maybe they come to the surface but it's the only way to release them and it's a safe environment, right? So if you suppress negative emotions or uh, something that you need to say and you, you're not spilling it out, right? It will create more stress, right? So this is a safe place during these practices to let go and allow those emotions that you have suppressed to come up. It's safe. If they come up, they can be released. If they never come up, you don't know, they may create something else like a disease or something, right? So uh, that is what happens. And then with practice, with practice, with repeated practice, people start having beautiful trips, intergalactic trips and all sorts of dreamlike experiences, but they even have out of body experiences, but it takes time, you won't, have that kind of experience if you do it the first time or the first year of practice it takes time like anything else so uh, this is what i wanted to tell you about i wanted to invite you let's go to the i think the last slide thank you very much for uh, your attention these are my contact details connect with me write to me I hope you you join me with a student discount and uh, if you would like to have a practice after your your feedback session I'm here for you to give you a taste.